Please avoid contact with the enemy. Subjects. All survivors are requested to proceed to the biomedical section. section immediately. Please avoid contact with the infected subjects. All survivors are requested to proceed to the biomedical section immediately. Please avoid contact with the infected subjects. All survivors are requested to proceed to the biomedical section immediately. Please avoid contact with the infected subjects. All survivors are requested to proceed to the biomedical section immediately. Please avoid contact with the infected subjects. All survivors are requested to proceed to the biomedical section immediately. Please avoid contact with the infected subjects. All survivors are requested to proceed to the Purity zero two on course, set to arrive on schedule. We'll soon pass the target star. I'd give anything for Ignatia to be here with me, to see this majestic reddish yellow giant. Such ferocity is beyond the confines of technology, and yet, to think how many painters have dreamt of mastering the array of color flowing in its flares. Ah, I talk too much. The first officer Fyodorov heard me, it'd probably be silently laughing behind that veneer of his. He and I see the world differently. For him it's all just a series of numbers. Data to be sorted, categorized and rationalized. It's what makes him a near perfect officer. But Ignatia... She looked at things differently. What I wouldn't give for her to be with me here now.
I finished sketching how I imagined this deity. Look at me, like some ancient relic. So few people use a pencil and paper to draw anymore. If it hadn't been for Ignatia, I would never have even tried it myself. It's been nine years. In our world of advanced technology, I never expected that smallpox would become lethal again. Nobody did. Three billion people. Fantaruk. A deity pieced together from the scrap heap of discarded religions. When the world turned its back on the people, they created a being to protect them and to avenge their ordeal. Ignatius spoke of it on many occasions. My wife wanted her to let it go, but I continued to listen, to lap up every last word. I was powerless. I sometimes wonder if it was supposed to be like that. Some kind of destiny, atonement for our sins. There was nothing I could have done. Ah, and here I am, an old man talking nonsense with a pencil in his hand.
I don't... I don't know how to report this. After leaving the bridge, I found my cabin turned upside down. Things were scattered on the floor and someone had tried to scribble something on pieces of paper, but hadn't got past the first few letters. I noticed a trembling figure in the dark corner of the room, one of the technicians working in the research section. What was his name? What was his name? I asked him, but he kept saying that it's punishment that will reach us all. I wanted to find out what he meant, but he just kept mumbling about this punishment. His rumbling started to mix with pleas for help as he wiped the blood dripping steadily from his nose. I don't think he was aware, but blood was also dripping from his ears. I tried to help him get up, but as I went to him, the mercenaries that were there to guard the ship stormed into my cabin. One of them pointed his gun right at my face. At me! The captain of the ship! He may have been young, but you could see the readiness in his eyes. He was prepared to kill. Someone must have warned him that he may not have a choice. I didn't intend to give him a reason. They took the technician with them. I was told to keep quiet. Panic and all that. Standard line. But they forgot about the most important thing. The truth. They never mentioned it. This man, he was scared stiff. He had come to me, and I couldn't do a thing. I could only watch as they carried him away. I watched the same thing happen nine years ago. This man came to me. Hmm. The punishment that will reach us all. 